Boom. Hello, hello. Happy Winners Wednesday. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. I know you might recognize this very friendly face, Mr. Ruben Garcia. Good morning. Hey, I got a friendly face. <laughs> you do. What are you talking yeah. about? <laughs> <laughs> very good. I'm glad to hear it. So Ruben, myself, and JB, we do this every single month. Well, I do, I do this session every single week with top producers all over the globe. Uh, but we do this particular session once a month um, because we're really looking to give back to real estate agents and really share best practices that not only we implement in our businesses, but also that we see other top producers that are doing all over the country. And so today we have a very hot topic of how to build your social media, your business using social media now. And the reason why I, I really brought this to light is I, you know, Ruben, just like you, I built my business using social media. And I know that you're heavily into social media now as well, but I think how we're utilizing social media today is definitely different than how we use, utilize social media yesterday and then how we're going to use it in the future. So yeah. with that said, do you mind just kind of kickstarting it off and you know, a little bit about you, your background, and then how you utilize social media to build your business to where you are today. Yeah. I mean, uh, I think, you know, what's interesting is that I, you know, I got this yesterday too, is, you know, I don't want to use social media because I've, I, don't, I don't like the way I look. I don't like the way I sound, whatever, whatever, whatever. And I got to remind people that I didn't have social media before getting into real estate either. But I got into real estate and understood that I needed to have some type of social media presence. And that was eight years ago. Um, so, wow. yeah, so it was very uncomfortable. Didn't know what I was doing. But a little bit of what I'm going to talk about today, which is uh, R&D, um, which is rip off and duplicate. You know, I just started to look at what others were doing and just ripped off what they did, what they said, how they answered questions, what type of posts they would put up. I would just do the same thing. So you don't even have to be uh, just this special light in the sky that does something different. Just copy what everyone else does. And that's what I did. And that's what helped me. Well, they, they always say don't reinvent the wheel, right? And, and the reality is I've heard top YouTubers, for example, say and almost give permission, like use my content because I'm basically ripping off from, from somebody else. Now, of course, we don't want to you know, copyright, put it in your own words. Ah, no. <laughs> Ruben's like, I'm over here writing it word for word. <laughs> That's right. No, I mean, I give a hundred percent, totally get what you're saying. And they understand the reason why they say take this is because more than likely they got the idea off somebody else, right? There's exactly. two quotes, you know, success leaves clues to follow it. And uh, I'm riding on the shoulders of giants, meaning I'm just doing what others are doing. And that's really what we're going to talk about today in this social media space. 100%. And, you know, I have a little bit of a different story than you. I got uh, licensed almost 14 years ago. Um, I got my license in Ruben. You can't necessarily relate to this, but two weeks before I had my oldest son. So, oh, um, right. you know, two kids. Well, you have kids, so you get this. But, you know, I, I didn't put them in. One out. You didn't. Um, <laughs> so that's why I said you can't relate. But you do have oh, kids. Okay. Um, but, you know, for somebody that it was important for me to be home with my kids, I didn't put them in any kind of daycare or anything like that. So I had to use social media to build my business. And even to today, living in Puerto Rico on an island couldn't be more isolated from the rest of the world. So um, one of the biggest mistakes, and, and Bruno, uh, good morning. Thank you so much for the shout out. Go ahead and give us a little bit of love. If you have any questions, comment below. I think a lot of people don't know where to get started. And one of the biggest mistakes that I find using social media is there's all these platforms, right? Anything from, your, you know, your your standard Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and then now we've got Snapchat and what Discord now. I mean, all kinds of stuff that I can't even, I learned from my kids, honestly. Um, but I always say focus on two, right? And that way, you know, you can definitely repurpose content, which we'll talk about later on, but really focus on two platforms. Ruben, what advice do you have on that? And what, what platforms do you um, put most of your time and energy into? Yeah. So if you don't know Mike Glaspie, you might want to follow Mike Glaspie. And the reason why I bring his name up is he got out of the military or was about to get out of the military. And he said, he asked me that same question, exactly the same question. And I said, I'll tell you what, there's a handful of them out there. Study one, two is fantastic too. I said, study one and just go in deep. That's it. Just focus on one. 
now now the dude is crushing me at instagram that ended up being his uh his his form right that was his space he wanted to be in he's now at um of course i can't that's crazy i am so sorry but he i'm at like three thousand ish of uh followers and he is at oh my gosh i'm so i don't know why it's not coming up and it's mike glassby i'll put his um yeah i should have had it up but yeah i just said focus on one thing and that's what he did oh there it is i did mike he put he got a professional and did michael so um, (laughs) yeah he's got nine thousand followers so he's he's doing it yeah, just focus on one. And he honestly, I thought about him on this um, this whole show because uh, there's some things that he's done that I want to talk about as well. But yeah, just focus on one, hundred percent or two. Absolutely. Yeah, no, and, and I think that's great. And like I said, you can definitely repurpose content onto other platforms. But as you just mentioned, go knee deep all in. It sounds like he did, and I've seen some of his videos, and he does a great job. Now, what advice do you have? For people that, you know, the most common thing that I know both of us here is I'm not comfortable on the camera. I don't like video, to be honest with you. I don't know anybody that actually likes it. Um, But maybe for somebody that's never been on camera before, what advice do you have for them? Yeah, first I'll say thank you, Bruno. I appreciate that uh, because it has been an organic drive. But, uh, you know, I did the same thing. So I'll tell my story is I... One, I have, I've, we used to go to this one church a lot and then I just stopped going excuses, right? Whatever. And then I decided to go back to this church. It was the largest church in my area and I became a greeter. And what that did was allow me to just talk, right? Like I I knew being on video and all that was going to be the future, but I didn't even really know how to talk to people. Like it was, it was awkward, believe it or not. So what better place to test that awkwardness in those conversations in that church, right? Nobody's going to make fun of you. Um, that's a first I've heard, but yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> be the greeter, be the one who greets. And honestly, it was a great experience. And obviously going to church was great too, but that was one of the benefits. It was a byproduct uh, to going to church and, and kind of pushing me outside of my comfort zone. And that's what really started the ball. Um, you know, some people, it doesn't have to be videos necessarily at first. It could be a picture and it doesn't even have to be a picture of you. And this is, I'm coaching this one firm and this, is this they told me straight up, you, I can't do social media. Don't even ask. And I said, well, start with a picture. Take a picture of something. Take a picture of the computer. Take a picture of your, your agents. Take a picture of something and then do a post. Well, now she's going Facebook live like every single day. She's a pro but, now. <laughs> yeah, dude, she's killing it. But she, she had to grow up to that point. So take a pictures of something else, eventually flip it on you. You know, if you're doing four pictures of something a week, do one mm-hmm. picture of you and then you will start to move into doing videos, but don't get too caught up into what the, the material is going to be. Just R N D. Mike Glassby is a great one. R and D something that I'm putting on or Micah or any of us. Actually, what we talk about today, you could do a video today and say two things I learned today on winner's Wednesday. Do this and do this. Have a good day. Bye. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you can finish it quickly, but we're giving you content to R&D, but you could start off slow and progressive. 100%. And, and one of the things that, you know, I know agents that we partner with that they will reach out to me and they're like, I want to start video, but I'm scared. I often will do a video like this and say, hey, let me interview you. You know, I've, I've been on the camera a lot a in point. my career, not just real estate, but previously in broadcasting. I'm like, you know, one of the best ways you can get your feet in the water is just letting somebody else that is comfortable interview you. And then once you, once you've done it, then you're like, okay, this is not so bad. I didn't die. Um, And the reality is people want, people work with people they like, know, and trust. And one of the best ways they can do that is through getting to know you on social media, staying staying top of mind and really building that relationship. We always say, if you want to own the market share, you've got to own the mind share. And so social media definitely helps with that personal brand. Now, um, to get back, I know we were talking about Mike Glassby, but um, and, and and I apologize if, if you said this, but what platforms do you personally focus on? Yeah, I didn't say it, uh, but uh, now it's Facebook and Instagram. Um, Instagram focus on storytelling, though, so using the stories a lot. I get a lot of interaction through stories mm-hmm. and uh, videos, videos, uploading videos as well. Which again, I was going to roll into all this as well, but the two that one that I focused on was Facebook because that's all there really was in the beginning eight years ago, 
and then Instagram. Now it used to be Snapchat. People told me, do not go on Snapchat. It's for people that are just trying to do hookups and all of this. And the most, the more people said that, the more I knew I needed to get on the platform because that just meant there was a lot of opportunity on there because no one else was going on there, you know? So I did it and started selling homes on Snapchat. Now the only thing that, and and it was, it, it was, it's stories. It's Instagram stories. That's what I was doing on Snapchat. Instagram was like, uh, uh-uh, uh, not, not, not in the USA. I'm going to take over this. And they started stories to combat Snapchat. And that's why they got reels combat TikTok. But I saw more engagement on Instagram. So I dropped Snapchat and went straight to that. So I'm not married to any platform. It's where I'm going to have the most engagement. Absolutely. Most engagement and who your ideal client is, right? And what platforms right. are they using? So when agents are looking at, or just entrepreneurs in general, you know, what do I post? I, the, one of the biggest mistakes that I find is they're just posting about real estate. You know, I had this closing today. Congratulations. I have this listing. And a couple of reasons why I think this is a mistake is number one, it shows a perception that you're too busy. And sometimes you'll you'd be surprised people don't reach out to you uh, because you appear to be too busy. And then number two, you're not being authentic. And so I know for me, although there's times we probably post a little bit more about work because there's just, you know, some exciting things going on, but I try to mix it up and be authentic and post a lot about my family life as well. And, you know, I can meet people that I've never met before and they know my kids' names and and they know what they look like or they might recognize them out. So what are some of the tools that you use to really be a three-dimensional character, which is hard to do on social media? Yeah. Uh, you know, if, if any of your viewers has showed up here, then obviously they want, yeah, a new pup, right? Yeah, so I need to go get her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where is she? I bet she better not be in a corner somewhere doing the dirty stuff. But, um, I, uh, I lost my train of thought. Sorry. So how are you at three dimension? The puppy distracts. A hundred percent. So not even all, here. <laughs> Allie, man, Allie, why are you bring up? Um, no, it's just telling my story. So for me, it's a lot easier because I'm literally just telling my story of the day. I don't, now I do have a calendar for anybody who's interested. It's a calendar of what you could do every single day where it is like education, uh, some of contribution, some personal business. And it's like this calendar thing. So if you want it, just DM and, and let me know. But I just literally tell my day, am I in the backyard taking up some vitamin D, taking a picture of the sun? Am I playing with my dog? That's going to be there too, you know, and then any real estate, any new agents who have joined the team, like all that, just whatever happens in the day, I'm just going to tell my story and you will find people who are funk. You're not going to attract the wrong people, right? Because right. people who are attracted to your story and who you are is the people that you're going to be surrounding yourself with more and more and more because you're just being authentic on camera, which can be a little difficult at first, but just tell your story and I promise you'll attract the ones you want to work with. Absolutely. And I think don't be afraid to show the good, the bad, the ugly, right? I think, you know, we have this perception of social media that we always have to just show the wins. And I'm not shy to show, you know, being in the hospital for some of my son's stuff going on or, um, you know, some other things like, you know, some challenges that we're going through or what have you, um, because that's what people ultimately want to relate to. So let's talk about repurposing content. How do you, um, you know, we talked about focusing on one or two platforms, but it's also, you know, important to try to reuse content as much as you can on all social media platforms. So how do you do that? Yeah. So if it's a picture, the first thing I'll do is I will upload it into LinkedIn. That's the first place I shoot it is on LinkedIn and with links and all of that. um, But if it's a picture I want to put on my timeline on Instagram, then I'll do it there. I will basically type it out. I will put, if there's a link, there's the puppy. There's that puppy. <laughs> Look at all the love. Um, I will do that, right? I'll put all the all that, the links and all that, except on Instagram, I'll say click the link in the bio because you can't put a link in the comments. Um, but other than that, it literally hits LinkedIn, Instagram, then Instagram stories, then Facebook personal, then Facebook business, and then workplace depending. I'll drop it in some workplace groups too. Um, uh, TikTok, if it's a video, uh, and then YouTube shorts, if it's a video. So yeah, it's the same thing. And I just spread, now I know Gary V back in the day said each platform needs a different conversation, but I literally, I just grab one and man, and I just dump it on all of them. And 
things seem to work out. Absolutely. And I, I think, uh, Ali said, yay. Ali, are you happy now? We got Coco here. <laughs> um, so, you know, one of the things that I, I think you bring a good point, Ruben, is, you know, a lot of times as entrepreneurs, we don't have time to put different content on every social media platform. And I'm speaking for myself, right? So Same. let's take this Winner's Wednesday, for example, is this is streaming to YouTube. It's also streaming to Facebook. Then we cut out snippets and we put them on, you know, TikTok and then we put them on Instagram stories and then Facebook. And so it's, you know, you can record it once, but use it five or six times. Right. And then, of course, it's all teasing to go back to the original video. So um, with that said, I know you've got some great nuggets. You mentioned some of the things that Mike Glassby and, and yourself do. So let's dive into those. Yeah. So first one or first thing, of course, we start with the acronym RND, which is rip off and duplicate. So for anybody who's here, Allie, the one who totally distracted me on a pup, um, <laughs> follow her. She kills it on video. Still everything she has. Sorry, Allie. Right. There's still everything I have. And what might just go do just rip off and dupl duplicate. So don't get caught in the getting ready to get 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 ready to get, you know, the whole thing. So R&D. Now, I'm going to flip it and make that an acronym as well. Reels on Instagram are doing really, really well. And the reason why I'm pointing towards Reels is I th TikTok's doing amazing. But unfortunately, I think, you know, they're saying it's, you know, where they're spying, China's spying on us. But I think more than anything, it's a big competition to some of uh, the, the bigger platforms. And uh, they're like, uh-uh, they're taking off. What do you think these local, these other platforms are doing? They're taking our information too, right? So... Um, they all are. I mean, I think we were talking about something with a friend last night, and then all of a sudden it showed up on our TikTok. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Listening. <laughs> so, I love TikTok. Go ahead and keep doing TikTok, but also, you know, start to move towards reels as well on Instagram. It could be, it's weird. I took a video coming back from EXP Shareholder Summit and took a video of Success Magazine at the airport and put some like Mac Miller in the background, and it had thousands of views. I was like, what in the world? Wow. But so just just short videos, telling your story, throw it on Instagram uh, and, and put a store, uh, a song behind it. You can also put it on LinkedIn or uh, TikTok. Go for it. But if they get rid of TikTok, at least your focus was on reels. Um, so I'll, I'll use the R for that. The N is new. So one of the new platforms that we have noticed and that Mike Glassby is doing a really good job on is YouTube shorts. So the same thing you're going to put on reels, put it on YouTube as well. The, the, the benefit of that is that eventually – depending on what type of following you you have, you can monetize it being on YouTube as well. So mm -hmm. Instagram, you can do it too, but YouTube just starts to be a little bit easier. And Mr. Beast, if you know Mr. Beast, which everyone knows Mr. Beast. Yeah, how can you not? <laughs> how can you not, right? Like who will be the first billionaire on YouTube from what YouTube has paid him and all the other things. Uh, YouTuber, first billionaire YouTuber. And he's saying it's going to be a big focus for his whole team to focus on shorts. And, and going back to what you said, if you've noticed, he's done a lot of podcasts lately. And the whole reason for that is so he can cut them up into bite-sized pieces and shove them on shorts. So repurposing the content. And Mr. B says it, hey, I'm following that new, new, right? And I'm going on uh, YouTube shorts. So that's the end. The D is ultimately what I think is that you need to find a way to pull these people from Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok, Shorts, Reels, the whole thing, Facebook, Instagram stories, and bring them into your database. How can you get their information? Now, you won't get everyone's, but how can you do a good job to get their information and add them to your database? Because that's where the conversions start to happen as well, at least in our world. So I can't speak for everybody, but for our world, that's exactly where it starts to happen. Um, and... So how do you do that, right? You have the engagement in those conversations. As they start to comment, start to comment back. Engage with these people. Um, if they say something, then say something back to them. Does it take a little bit of time in the beginning? Yes. Maybe in the future you can hire that out, though. Start that conversation, move to the DMs, and get their number almost immediately. It needs to be almost a habit to do that, to add to the database. We just got a land deal. Um, we've had agents come over, <clears throat> uh, cappers that have come over. We've got, we've got a lot of cool stuff from, from that. And then the other D within R and D I'm, I'm using it twice is the power. There is power in the DMS and you know, this from what I've done and I still do it to this day. I just did it today and got somebody. We met on, on social media, by the way. So <laughs> it's like it works or something. Um, <laughs> that's right. You, we sure did in the Facebook group, uh, Grant Cardone's mm -hmm. Facebook group and, and the mm -hmm. uh, stories 
uh, story braid, I think right. is what it was. But uh, going into the DMs, and I still do it to this day. If I got a new follow, I got more comments and all of this. It's thanks for the connection, Allie. Curious, comma. What had you reach out? I literally do that. And I'm telling you, we get deals. We get people's information because people are following you for a reason. People are commenting on your stuff for a reason. People are watching your stories because you can see who's watching your stories for a reason. Reach right. out. When we were in Florida, Orlando, and we were hanging out. And, 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 actually, I was going to bed at eight. Remember? like <laughs> You were, yeah. You were like, all right, I'm out. Peace. I'm out. <laughs> um, but in, in the Harry Potter uh, train. But uh, even that day, you know, I saw somebody kept watching our story while we were in Orlando, reached out to him. He was the top Remax dude, and he ended up coming over because I reached out to him. So there's power in the DMs, not only in deals, but attracting talent. So go into the DMs, get that information, bring them in, um, either client or talent. Um, do you have any questions on that or I got three, I got two more, but no, keep on going. That's great. That's great. Okay. I got two bonus, two bonus. Another one that's been working out really well. I have like three or four Facebook groups that say like, I don't know, Fayetteville sales and I don't know the other names. I honestly, Oh, all only in Fayetteville. I don't remember what it, I'm in Fayetteville, North Carolina, but so like, uh, location specific Facebook groups. I block anybody who wants to come in with questions. Now, the questions are like, follow me on YouTube and, and this and that. The, I, the whole idea of that is I just need them to knock at the door. Once right. they knock at the door and I see that they're waiting to be invited in, I just DM them. And I have this copy paste. Matter of fact, I'll bring it up and give it to you verbatim. I have this copy paste thing I do on everybody. And if any of them watching now, I'm sorry. This is just part of my process. <laughs> As I say, thank you for your interest in wanting to join the group, exclamation mark, curious, comma, what has you interest, interested in jumping in? And I, we, earlier today, we just got an agent who's interested in investing in Fayetteville, and she's in Fayetteville with another firm. I'm sorry if you're watching. I promise we deliver value. Uh, <laughs> but I got her number because we have an investor meetup this weekend. Now, people, again, are knocking on your door not only watching your stories, but the Facebook groups that they believe that they can get value from. And there should be, in my world, there should be some type of it, some type of exchange. I can exchange the number and I can deliver even more value. So remember, in game, bring them into the database and build that out. So Facebook groups have been working really well um, for me and for anybody out there. That's something you could do today. It's not necessarily you doing selfies and videos and anything like that. It's literally just asking them, hey, what had you interested in getting in this group? Name a number, reach out to them. Um, any questions on that? No, but I'll, I'll kind of tag on that a little bit as I actually have text codes that I use on my phone and my computer. So if somebody adds me on Facebook, I agree hundred percent, you need to start engaging with them. Otherwise the 5,000 friends doesn't mean anything. So if I just type in my phone or my computer FB ad, it's going to auto populate my, my generic message that goes out that starts the conversation. Right. That's awesome. Right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think that's so important. Again, they're following you for a reason. You know, is it for a deal? Is it a buyer? Is it a seller? Is it talent? Or is it just somebody who's interested in what you're doing? It doesn't matter. Ultimately, and I think Grant Cardone said this, which I feel like most salespeople have said this, but everything you want is through people. Everything. Right. Everything. The house you guys are building, it takes people. It takes <laughs> relationships. It takes it takes uh, talking to people to get these things under contract. Everything we want is through people. So engage with more people, right? Contacts equal contracts, the whole thing. But just everything you want is through people. Um, I can't read my handwriting. It's one more. <laughs> well, while he's doing that, if you have any questions, go ahead and comment below. Hopefully we've got a few minutes here, so we'll, we'll try to get to your questions. Yeah, um, I would love to answer your questions too. If uh, So it says, and this is something that's worked. And I think I may have brought this up at Orlando as well when we were talking this, about social media. Is that anytime, by the way, raise your hand, comment, hit a heart. If you've seen that in the past or even today, that somebody will put looking for a realtor in this location in a Facebook group. And then before you know it, everyone from freaking the universe to Pluto to earth starts 45 comments <laughs> Dude, and it doesn't stop. It's like, bah. and it's like rapid fire. People are tagging other people, people that are agents. So like use me, the one differentiator that I do and that I 
push others to do is do a video right. in the comments, open up your camera. And this, right, if we're talking about changing what social media is to get more deals, this has literally gotten us a lot more deals because how easy is it to scroll past comments and then you see some goofy dude like <laughs> in a video at the still frame, you know, it always gets you at a weird face. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they stop and they hit play and it's like, hey, what's up? This is Ruben in Fayetteville, North Carolina. I know that you're looking to buy in the area. My team and I are ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and DM you right now, but I just want mm -hmm. to leave a quick video just to show you how hungry we are. How can Love they it. say no to that? Love right? It. Then you go into the DMs and do the video or just comment and just say, hey, team and I are ready to go. How can we help? Blah, blah, blah. That's got us a mm -hmm. lot of deals. And those are the two bonuses I wanted to drop after the R&D. I love it. And I always say, hey, I just want to introduce myself. I wanted you to be able to put a face with the name, right? Something very organic and, and, and you know, not just for moving, but I, I saw on, on Facebook, I think it was about a week ago that somebody said that, you know, they were looking for a brokerage change. And of course, every brokerage in town was commenting. So I did a video and I just, I almost did just an icebreaker. I said, oh my God, I feel bad for you. Your phone is going to be blowing up. Yep. Um, and I had her on a Zoom that day sharing with her the EXP opportunity. So it's like, how can you stand out from what everyone else is doing? You know, we talked about being authentic. We talked about repurposing your content and just really, it doesn't have to be perfect. I think that's the biggest thing is people just want to get to know you. I mean, to be honest, we jumped on this. And, you know, JB had a family emergency, unfortunately, that, you know, um, we couldn't, that, that made it to where she couldn't come. And so we had to reevaluate, but it's not about being perfect. It's about getting in there, just jumping in and doing it. And so I think that's one of the most important things with social media. You talked about adding value within your communities. That's one of the biggest differences where I find that agents do it at a high level is they're providing value first. And then the other part of it is, not just providing value, but also, you know, the biggest difference, if I go door knock for an hour every single day, maybe I'm the best door knocker in the world, but I'm only going to be, that's limiting to me to an hour a day of prospecting. Whereas if you utilize YouTube and social media, other social media platforms, and you make it evergreen, that's allowing you to prospect 24 hours a day, seven days a week, say 365 days a year. So it definitely gives you a much broader audience and outreach. Allie asked, did you make that video as a comment or a DM? I believe you you, meant, you said as a DM. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, both, actually. So I'll do a video in the comments because they're going to scroll and then they're going to see your video, right? And then I will let them know in that video, hey, I'm about to DM you. Because what happens, right? When we DM somebody that we're not friends with, it goes into their spam folder thing. So I want them to know that I'm about to DM them. And so they'll, they'll see it. They'll look for it. So I'll actually do both. It literally takes 15 seconds for the whole thing. It doesn't take any time to, 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 to get a lead for 15 seconds. But going back on what you said on door knocking, for our people when they're doing open houses or door knocking, here's another thing for everybody. We push them to do this. And this is this – is, all right, we push them to do this. Pending in the last – or whatever's pending – Closed in the last six months, um, active in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Pull it very quickly using the MLS. If that neighborhood has a sign, like in the front of the neighborhood, stand in front of it and say, hey, I'm out here at this neighborhood. Um, I'm in the Winner's Wednesday neighborhood, and I just want to go over the market, market stats of this neighborhood. Let me know if you have any questions or if you need a private showing today or anything like that. But let me go straight into it. Boom. What's pending? Boom. What's active? Boom. What's closed in the last six months? That's an easy pull from the MLS and just say, hey, let me know if you have any other questions. I'm here to help you. And that stays real estate, video real estate on your social media. So anytime anybody's looking up that neighborhood or other people may be in that neighborhood tagging that video like, oh, I didn't know this. Hey, Susie neighbor, did you know this? <laughs> right. And it, it, it's going to be able to push you even further into the the uh, the known atmosphere where people know you, and you become that 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 uh, professional of that neighborhood, right? Although it's an easy pull from MLS, um, it, it starts to to separate you as a professional of that neighborhood, and then do do two neighborhoods a weekend, right? right. Two, now you got eight neighborhoods, right? Just do that all year, you kill it.
I would say, imagine doing that for a year, two or three, you're going to become the neighborhood expert, right? Um, Trina, thank you so much for the shout out. She said, this is pure gold. I really appreciate it. If you've got any topics or anything that you'd love for us to discuss, we're always looking for new topics. We want to answer your questions. So please go ahead and comment below and we'll definitely get to them. Uh, Ruben, I think we, we gave a jam packed half hour here. Anything else that you'd love to add? Uh, yeah. For any of y'all who take the, uh, the, I want to say competition. That's not it. The, um, Oh my gosh, there's a word for it. Anyone who goes out and does the things that we talked about today, do me a favor, tag myself and Micah in it. So we not only know you did it, but number two, we will comment, we will like and share. That way it will help your algorithm to get your name out there even further. So just tag us in it when you do it and we'll help you out. 100%. We're all in it together and we're, you know, Nobody's ever going to be perfect to go in and at social media. It's definitely a skill that you've got to continue to sharpen. I mean, heck, I'm over here balancing a, a puppy while trying to pay attention. So. <laughs> Thanks, Allie. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much, Ruben. I know your time is valuable. You're very busy. You always give great nuggets as always. So we really appreciate it. And as I mentioned, if you guys have any topics that you want for the future, just go ahead and let us know tag Ruben and myself and we definitely want to get to, to you. Um, but Allie, you're not allowed back on. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Awesome. Well, thank you guys. I hope you have a great rest of your Wednesday and have a powerful week. Thanks.